The Career Day camera crew visited the City of Alexandria Police Department in Alexandria, Virginia, where analysts are using GIS to help police officers fight crime. Absolutely. I mean, I think the best way to define GIS is to talk about how it's about placing data um, into a geographic context. So the police department has all sorts of data. There's data on criminal incidents, there's data on arrests, calls for service information, um, that's anytime somebody calls the police department, towed vehicles, um, all that is data. And so without GIS, we really can't analyze where things happen in relation to other things. So GIS really helps us to put incidents on a map and then look at the relationships between where this crime occurred, where that vehicle was towed, where this person was contacted by the police department. So it really brings all, everything together. I can tell you what law enforcement did before. And that is that they would hang a map on the wall and they stick pins in the map to tell them where certain crime happens. And they might use a blue pin for a burglary and a red pin for an auto theft. And you know, that was analysis and that was good, but it was cumbersome. And if somebody walked by the map and knocked the pins out of the map, then somebody had to scramble and figure out where the pins went, you know? So there were a lot of issues with that. Police departments are starting to understand that you need GIS, you need analysis in general to solve some of these problems, to take some of the burden off of police officers and detectives um, as far as using their memory to solve problems and to actually use data and analysis to solve problems. And so you see more departments hiring civilian crime analysts or even turning sworn positions into crime analysts so that they can um, really understand and effect, most effectively respond to the problems in their communities. Matt, I understand that there's been some uh, more larcenies on the South Whiting Street area. Could you pull up a map and tell me exactly where, where they've been happening? Absolutely. Are you looking for, um, you know, larceny grand, larceny petted, anything specifically? Mainly larceny from autos. Okay. Um, this tool is actually using GIS too, and it's a tool called pictometry, and it allows us to find the aerial photo of a particular address. And so if we have an incident that occurred at, let's say, City Hall. Uh, City Hall is 301 King Street. So I can type that in and search for it. It's gonna give me a return. And I say select it. And it's gonna zoom us into King Street and show us the aerial photo for that. This is very important for operational purposes. And you can see that this is Market Square and City Hall here at King Street and we're looking at it from this angle. But suppose I'm reading the report and it tells me that the crime, it, this view always comes in from the south to the north, but it tells me that the crime happened on the west side of City Hall, which is over along this street right here. Then I can shift to that view and click the west side and it's gonna go ahead and show me now the west side of City Hall. By the same token, if something happened on the north side, I can click that north button and it'll take me to the north side of City Hall. So it really allows us to see what the land looks like um, without ever leaving the office. So it's a really helpful tool. We've actually created some systems here at the police department where every officer has access to GIS data in the form of maps. So if they're going out to a particular location, they can actually look on a map and see what incidents have happened around that location before they even get there. So it's a really good way to inform them of what's happened and so we've built the infrastructure in place so that all the officers can use GIS. A lot of times we're able to provide them with information when they get back in the office after spending the whole day out talking to witnesses, talking to victims, they come back in the office and we're able to provide them with more information of stuff that we've found um, about that case, about the person, you know, uh, just some general information that helps aid in their investigation. Um, without looking at things on a map, you miss certain patterns that you see once you put the data on a map. For instance, you can look at listings of cases over and over again, which list different addresses. And unless you know every single address in the city, you're not going to realize that that address on Taney Avenue is right around the corner from that address on Raleigh Avenue. Um, 
But when you put it on the map, you see that those two incidents could be 150 feet apart. And so the fact that those incidents seem similar and they're in close geographic proximity tells you that, hey, maybe they're related. Once we find out series of cases that are related, then we can start making predictions about when the next case is going to happen. So like in this case, this particular crime is a theft from vehicle. And it says an unknown suspect smashed passenger side window and stole a GPS unit that was in plain sight. Well, if I look at the map, you can see that right around where that particular offense occurred, there's several other offenses right in there. So if you click on these other offenses, you'll see that it's a very similar description to these other offenses. So really, we're hoping that citizens in this neighborhood will look at this map, see what's going on there, and take precautions like not leaving their GPS units in plain view, making sure their vehicles are locked, and parking in lighted areas, and different things like that. First of all, we work very closely with our neighboring jurisdictions. So when they have crime that's going on that looks like it's very similar to our crime, we'll go ahead and share data with them, put it on a map, and see where it's occurring. But a lot of times when there's a crime series in Arlington or Fairfax County, we may not realize that it's happening just over our border. And a lot of times the criminals don't realize where they're committing their crimes. They know which neighborhoods they're going to, but they don't realize which jurisdiction it's in. And so really, they, from time to time, they go back and forth across our borders. And so if we just try to analyze our data without using Arlington and Fairfax's information, we're really only looking at one piece of the, the whole data set. So as I look at crime patterns that occur in my neighborhood, it informs me as a citizen as to what to be aware of. If you look at it from a policing standpoint, the police can only do so much. A lot of the, a lot of the crimes that occur are preventable, and they're preventable if the citizens have the information that they need about crime patterns and crime problems. We've recently just used GIS to um, enter into agreement with CrimeReports.com, where now our data is mapped on the internet at all times so citizens can view our crime and where it's occurred in the city. And what our hope is that the citizens can look at where the crimes are occurring, look at what types of crimes are occurring, and maybe alter their behaviors or their patterns so that they're not victims of these crimes that are occurring when we're not around to stop.